it is seldom the case a single incident can change the course of history. Yet the gunshots in Sarajevo in 1914 did just that. And through the bloodshed that followed, it ushered in the modern world. Two world wars, the Russian Revolution, the Cold War, the Holocaust, the United Nations, modern technology, atomic energy, the space race and the lunar landings. The list is endless. Three years after those gunshots, with the Great War burning Europe, another incident took place with almost equal ramifications. Far less dramatic than a gunshot, it was nevertheless a turning point in history. Arguably the most important piece of electric communication ever sent, we present the Zimmerman Telegram. The First World War began in 1914 with the July Crisis, caused by the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Peace in Europe was a house of cards, and the assassination a strong wind, and so nations and alliances drew empires and republics into a war fought across the globe. By 1917, the positions of the Allied and Central Powers were entrenched and movement rare. The war of attrition had weakened Imperial Germany, and perhaps Kaiser Wilhelm and his government would have eventually sued for peace, but such an outcome would have been years away. There was one great power which had not joined the war. The United States of America was doing well supplying arms to the warring nations, although the British blockade of German ports had caused some outrage against the British. But the American majority did not want to become involved in a foreign war. This was to change. The Cunard liner Lusitania had been torpedoed by the Imperial German Navy in May 1915, killing 128 Americans. A year later came the Black Tom explosion, in which German agents sabotaged US munitions in New York Harbor, causing one of the biggest non-nuclear man-made explosions in human history. There was, however, a strong inclination in the United States against becoming involved in a European war. There were also half a million German Americans in the US. And there was a strong anti-British sentiment in the American press. Unrestricted submarine warfare had begun in February 1917, resulting in the United States breaking off diplomatic relations with Germany. Yet even as US President Woodrow Wilson was introducing into Congress the Armed Shipping Bill, allowing the arming of American merchantmen, there was still no desire to drag the United States into the war. Many German cables had been cut by the British in the early weeks of the war. A cable ship, possibly the Talconia, left port the day after war was declared and cut those cables running out of Emden. Two US bound cables, the Emden to Brest cable, the Emden to Vigo cable and the Emden to Tenerife cable. There is also research suggesting the German cables were cut by the paddle wheel propelled cable ship Alert. But whichever cable ship holds the honour, the submarine cables were severed. There remained the submarine cables of other nations, and Germany turned to those run by pro-German Sweden. Those Swedish cables, incidentally, ran through Great Britain and were relayed by the telegraph station in Porthkerno in Cornwall. In 1915, the American State Department gave the German government permission to use their cables to communicate with the German embassy in Washington DC on the understanding it was used only for exchanges concerning Woodrow Wilson's peace terms. The Germans agreed 
and then ignored the restrictions. Unfortunately for Imperial Germany, their Washington embassy was not the only one listening to their cablegrams. The British had tapped the American cable, and it was along this submarine cable that the Zimmermann telegram was transmitted. The British had broken the wall of secrecy surrounding the German naval codes. The HVB codebook, designed for exchanges between warships and merchantmen, as well as shore commands, had fallen into British hands early on. A second codebook, the SKM, had been obtained from the Russians, who had retrieved it from a German cruiser, the Magdeburg, which had run aground and been scuttled. A third codebook, the VB, had been hoisted from the depths by a British fishing trawler after being dropped overboard by a sinking German U-boat. These codebooks found their way to the boffins in room 40, the Admiralty's fledgling code-breaking office and the forerunner of the Government Code and Cipher School at Bletchley Park, and later GCHQ. But it was the German diplomatic codes Room 40 was hard at work deciphering. And it was in just such a code the Zimmermann telegram was transmitted. Arthur Zimmermann was the foreign minister of the German Empire, a large, jolly and blunt man. During the Lusitania crisis, Whilst he was Deputy Foreign Minister, he is supposed to have told the US Ambassador to Berlin that the 500,000 German-Americans in the United States would rise up against the US government if the Americans took action against Germany. The Ambassador responded by saying there were over 500,000 lampposts in the United States those German-Americans would find themselves hanging from if they did so. Zimmerman knew the relationship between the United States and Mexico was not a close one. Mexico was experiencing a revolution, and the Americans had put the country under an arms embargo in order to reduce the proliferation of weapons. Woodrow Wilson had sent troops into Veracruz in 1914 as a response to the interception of a German liner carrying armaments to Mexico although war between the two countries was avoided. Arthur Zimmerman had an idea to delay, or even prevent, the Americans manufacturing and transporting arms to the Allied powers. And so, in early February 1917, he wrote the Mexican government a message. The message was delivered, in code, to the American embassy in the German capital, and transmitted via diplomatic cable. It went to Copenhagen in Denmark, then to London and on to Cornwall so that the message could be boosted across the North Atlantic. The telegram, or to be strictly accurate, the cablegram, used a code the British called 13040. In the message, Zimmerman proposed an alliance, promising Mexico the states of Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona, if Germany won the war. Further, he proposed that the Mexican government approach the Japanese and convince them to join a Mexican-German alliance. In English, it read, We intend to begin on the 1st of February unrestricted submarine warfare. We shall endeavour, in spite of this, to keep the United States of America neutral. In the event of this not succeeding, we make Mexico a proposal of alliance on the following basis. Make war together, make peace together. Generous financial support and an understanding on our part that Mexico is to reconquer the lost territory in Texas, New Mexico and Arizona. The settlement in detail is left to you. You will inform the President of the above most secretly, as soon as the outbreak of war with the United States is certain, and add the suggestion that he should, on his own initiative, invite Japan to immediate adherence 
and at the same time mediate between Japan and ourselves, please call the President's attention to the fact that the ruthless employment of our submarines now offers the prospect of compelling England in a few months to make peace. Signed, Zimmerman. Intercepting the Zimmerman telegram initially presented the British with a dilemma. If they revealed it to the Americans, not only would the Germans learn their codes had been broken, but the Americans would not be particularly happy to find their would-be allies had tapped one of their cables. Luckily, the German embassy in Washington sent the message on to Mexico, and it was whilst it was on its way to the hands of the German ambassador to Mexico that the British could claim to have intercepted it. The British were not quick to alert the United States government. They waited for the best moment. In early February, the Germans sent another message to the Mexican embassy via their Washington embassy. This was also intercepted and decoded. But as February progressed, Woodrow Wilson leant further away from war and the British realised the time had come. On February the 23rd of February, 1917, the text of the Zimmerman telegram was handed to the American ambassador to the court of St. James, Mr. Walter Page. Mr. Page sent it to Washington, D.C. On Thursday, the 1st of March, the existence of the Zimmerman telegram was made public. There was widespread disbelief in the authenticity of the telegram. The newspapers of William Randolph Hearst, who was particularly anti-British, cried foul. And then, in an extraordinary move, Arthur Zimmerman publicly admitted the telegram was authentic. The Imperial German government threw away an opportunity to salvage the situation, and this cost them dearly. Indeed, it cost them the war, by turning much of the American public against Germany, thereby removing an obstacle against the United States entering the war. Woodrow Wilson had previously stated he did not want to ally his country with any nation not counted as democratic. And with Tsarist Russia as a member of the Triple Entente, the US president had a reason to refuse British overtures. But on Monday, the 19th of March, Tsar Nicholas II abdicated, thereby removing another obstacle. Increased submarine activity and the sinking of three American ships added further to the case for war. The United States declared war against the Central Powers on the 6th of April 1917. The declaration reads as follows. Whereas the Imperial German government has committed repeated acts of war against the people of the United States of America, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that the state of war between the United States and the Imperial German government, which has thus been thrust upon the United States, is hereby formally declared, and that the President be, and he is thereby, authorized and directed to employ the entire naval and military forces of the United States and the resources of the government to carry on war against the Imperial German government and to bring the conflict to a successful termination, all the resources of the country are hereby pledged by the Congress of the United States. The resolution was passed in the Senate by 82 to 6 and in the House of Representatives by 373 to 50. The United States of America joined the Allied powers as an associated power, and over the course of the war, a battle squadron of four dreadnoughts, USS New York, USS Wyoming, USS Florida, and USS Delaware, crossed the Atlantic, the American expeditionary forces under Major General John J. Pershing fought on the Western Front, 
and nearly 2 million American men stood on European soil, comparable in numbers to the British, and thereby increasing the strength of the Allied and Associated Powers against an exhausted Germany. There can be little doubt that the entry of the United States into the war shortened the First World War. There were many reasons for the Americans to join the Allies, but no one can deny the effect one cablegram had on the opinions of the American public. Arthur Zimmerman's catastrophic message, followed by his even more catastrophic admission that the cablegram was authentic, backfired on Imperial Germany by drawing the newest great power on the world stage into a war against them. <laughs>